live. single stroke, the single stroke uh, roll. So, I should know about stroking. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the single stroke roll. So um, basically it's, it's pretty simple. When everyone thinks about like a drum roll, they probably like, what's a drum roll? Can you get a, a drum roll please? Cool. Awesome. And that's a great drum roll. So she's just alternating her sticking. So, um, you know, right, left, right, left, right, left. Or you can start with your left, left, right, left, right, left, right. Now it can be a variety of different speeds. Um, it's not going to be one set speed. Typically they write them out as like 30 second notes. You don't have to know what that means. Um, but just yeah. and when we're doing this the biggest thing we want to focus on everybody wants to go fast and that's cool but if you want to go fast uh, you want to be smooth and kind of like be really comfortable and confident with it and in order to make it sound good 
We need you know our stick height to be pretty even, so how high we're lifting the stick on both hands. It's really common if you're right-handed to lift your right stick pretty high and play pretty loud with that one, and then we have your left stick uh, not come up quite as high. So you're gonna have that kind of like <laughs> sound to it, where it's like that's actually kind of cool depending on like what you're trying to do. But if you're trying to go for <laughs> and have a nice even sound, you want your stick to be coming up the same height, you want to be hitting about the same volume, um, and you want to be fairly relaxed too. So, can you see it yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. Nice. Yeah, and you're a little bit tighter in your left hand. So, that's just one thing you have to practice, you know, um, like a good exercise would be to do to your right for a little bit, to your left for longer, and then to go. We use it all the time on the drum set, whether it's playing a, um, you can play a drum beat with it, so. Those are all single strokes, so. Really important. We use it for drum fills, we use it for beats, and we'll talk about what those things are uh, shortly. But yeah, that's the first one. We also have a double stroke roll, so instead of hitting one time with each stick, we're actually gonna hit twice on each side. So, for example, right, right, left, left. Yep, that's right. Yeah, exactly. You could also start with your left hand and do your right. Mm -hmm. Cool, great. Now, what's interesting about this um, is I think a lot of teachers, the kind of old school way seem to be uh, to just have people go like this and practice that at a bunch of different speeds sick and tired of it and just you don't really care um, but uh, I really I really like to teach kids early on and, and adults even as well to actually try to get rebound in order to get that second hit and what I mean is when a drummer who's able to play double strokes well you know that's twice on each hand every time I drop my stick I'm getting two hits um, and that's not because I'm going like tapping twice really quickly I'm letting the stick fall and the second note is actually a bounce so if you let the stick bounce it wants to bounce a lot. So we're just going to let that happen. And it does take practice, but the goal is to get that second note kind of come for free. Um, so then if I'm playing this, like single strokes, and I let the stick bounce so that it hits twice each time, I get a roll that's twice as fast. So I go from doing... Without having to really do much else, my I mean, my like grip changes a little bit, um, but I don't actually have to like try and play. Move my hands a lot faster, so it enables us, of course, to play it much much faster. When I'm just moving my hands at about the same speed as. Double strokes are great. Lets me play a lot faster than you normally do with it. So cool. Um, we also have, let's see, what else do they have on our list here? Paradiddles. Fun, goofy name. So, uh, diddle is an old school term as well for double, which we just talked about. So, hitting twice on one side. Um, and this one's called a paradiddle. So, we know the last part that diddle is going to be a double. So, that's cool. And really, this is a mixture of the first two things we talked about single strokes and then double strokes. So, and it kind of uh, switches up a little bit. So, uh, once again, rudiments are largely like sticking patterns, so the order in which we're hitting, uh, you know, with our right and our left sticks. So, in this case, uh, if we start with the right, it's going to be, I like to think about it like a pair of sticks, so your right and your left, and then a diddle. So, we're going to do pair, so right, left, yep, and then we're going to do right, right for the diddle at the end. Yep, good, and then because you ended on the right, it's going to make sense to switch over and start on the left this time. Exactly, yeah. So the second one will be left, right, left, left. Yep. And then the goal is with this one, it's kind of weird because it, it seems like you probably want to go like. A lot of people like to do that when they're playing it. It makes sense. The double should be faster or something. But what we actually want is to play them straight. Um, so like all the same, like just typically they're written out as 16th notes, but basically all even, all straight, the same amount of space between every single note. So, so nice and slow.
really well too. She's got her thumb on her right hand, like on the stick. That's great. And she made it to your left hand. There you go. Cool. Yeah, her thumb was getting a little bit lazy on this side, but that's oh. the right hand looked really good. So cool. Um, yeah, and your parry was down good. You weren't messing up. That's great. Now, uh, as we get faster, also actually I have to talk about this first. So we want to actually try to accent the first note of each of those paradiddles. So you know what an accent is, Sam? Yeah, uh, if you're looking at the physical music, yes, there's like a little marking on the written music for accent. So an accent is when we play um, a note or notes louder than the other notes, relatively speaking. So um, we want to accent that first note. So loud, so right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. It's tricky, yeah. So, I mean, honestly, you know, that's that's down the road. I say if you're going to practice paradiddles, just get used to this, the, the combination of like going back and forth and try a different speed, you know. You can make them all the same volume. Don't worry about trying to add in the accents. This is down the road after you get comfortable with them and you feel like you can kind of like play them without having to think about it too much and you're not getting mixed up and doing like three rights or three lefts or forgetting to do a double half the time. So then you can add in your accents and that's when it starts to really... Um, it, it gets a pretty cool sound to it, and you get to the point where you can kind of play them faster as well. And in reality, you remember what I said about doubles? We don't want them to actually be like <laughs> tapping points. We let it bounce, right? Mm -hmm. So in this exercise, that double becomes a like rebound double. So. I mean, technically, singles, doubles, paradiddles, you can play the, all the same stuff with those, but it does give you different options as far as uh, how you want to orchestrate, especially, I think, on drum set. Um, so we can play, you know, uh, a beat using a paradiddle even just on, like, hi-hat and snare drum. So... more than just a sticking pattern, it's more like a simple melody. So, you know, chick stop, chick chick stop, chick stop, chick stop, chick stop, stop, chick stop, chick stop, chick stop, chick stop, or seat we sit on is the throne because I guess we're all cocky and we think we have a throne because we're kings or something. I don't know. It's probably because we're shoved to the back. But they the are. We have very Number nice two. ones here actually and they can mm -hmm. be very, very expensive. Yeah. Um, so the one that Jared is sitting on right now is about 150 to 200, right? 200. Yeah. $200. <laughs> and the one that I'm sitting on is probably like 100? Yeah, a little bit under, I think, for us. So seven. they have different cushionings, and you obviously want to have this a really... This one is pretty convenient. It's like an office chair. Yeah. Well, yeah. especially if you're sitting there for like a four-hour gig. Yes, definitely. They're definitely nice. Uh, this is a rock and sock. They're great. Um, what's the one I have? I don't remember. You guys don't really care about drum throws anyway. I just thought it was funny that they can include that on there. <laughs> I think it's great. Okay. Especially since you were trying to sell me one yesterday. Yeah, I was trying to sell them my old one. It's actually one of these. This is really nice. 
If I don't buy it, we will be selling it. Um, we will drop the price on here. If you're interested, you can call and contact Jared. Sounds good. Sweet. Okay. Um, we also have drum fills. I'm probably going to talk about uh, beats first. Um, so when we think about a drum beat, um, yeah, typically I think everyone thinks of like a... But a drum beat could also be, you know... It doesn't have to be just hi-hat and bass drum and snare drum. Those are the most common kind of parts of the drum kit that we use for that, but any, any pattern essentially that we're repeating, and that kind of makes you, uh, and it depends on the style of music, I guess I shouldn't say definitely makes you want to groove every time, but that's kind of the goal, um, is that it should, you know, set the stage for uh, the rest of the song, I think, as far as uh, the feel of it. So, um, yeah, that's what a, a groove or a beat is. So it's just a steady pattern that we're playing that should definitely complement the song. Um, and most of, I would say, contemporary drumming on a drum kit can be separated into beats and grooves like that, um, which are just two terms for the same thing, again, um, and then fills. So a drum fill would be, um, it gets the name F-I-L-L -L from uh, basically filling a space in the music. So uh, oftentimes if we're going from one part of, uh, of the music, maybe like a verse to a chorus or something like that, um, and it should definitely complement what's going on. It might also, you know, you might play a fill that accents something that the other band members are doing, like a horn section or a guitarist or whatever. So, um, if I'm playing a beat, that kind of thing. So it's a little extra fun stuff we get to do as drummers. Um, and you're doing a workshop on that, right? Yeah, so the, the workshop is on being creative and soloing. Um, and so it will like you know cover some of the fill stuff. But it's also about being creative when you're playing grooves as well and just trying to get um, the most kind of like mileage out of what you already know. So trying to, you know, we're gonna learn some new stuff technically, but I'm not really gonna be teaching everybody how to like do crazy stuff. It's more gonna be taking what you already know and like taking it further, going deeper with it um, and that kind of thing. So, but yeah, I mean, You'll be able to apply that to fills as well, of course, uh, but hopefully apply it to grooves and just playing songs as well. So right. that workshop um, we're mentioning is November fourteenth uh, from ten a.m. to noon. So if you're interested in attending that workshop, just call the front desk at Music Compound, and we'll give you more details. Once again, that's November fourteenth, and Jared will be leading that. Yep. Cool. It'll be fun. All right. What's All right. the next thing? Uh, let's see here. We've also got traditional and match grip. So match grip is the way that Jenny and I are playing. We're holding them both the sticks the same way. It's kind of how, you know, if you handed it, even a little kid, a pair of drumsticks, you would probably be like, you know. Um, so that's match grip. Uh, they're both facing the same way. Traditional grip, um, I actually play this way a fair bit. Actually, if you might notice, my snare drum's kind of angled down. Um, traditional grip, the reason it became traditional, there's, um, from what I understand, uh, marching drummers used to wear a drum on a sling around them. So because of the sling going like over one shoulder and down, the drum actually hung at an angle. So rather than having to play like this, for like marching for hours, they adopted a grip that would allow them to play kind of naturally with their elbow down so they could play that way. Um, and that's just become, that was the standard for a long time. I mean, you know, everybody's playing jazz drums in like the early 1900s and, and through like the 40s, 50s, 60s, all that stuff, even up to like probably 20 years ago. A lot, every, every kid had to learn this way, I think. Um, you know, at least to learn how to play traditional. In marching bands, they still play traditional grip. Uh, it's kind of cool though. There's a little bit of a difference. Um, the fulcrum in your hand and match grip is in front of your fingers, which is kind of interesting. And then the fulcrum in traditional grip is actually behind your fingers. So it kind of provides some interesting different uh, challenges and also some certain things that actually seem to be easier with traditional grip than they are with match grip, um, different techniques and stuff. So it's kind of interesting. Can you try that again? So, and I guess I should go over traditional grip since a lot of people don't really know how I actually supposed to hold it. Um, just kind of like, like, like the little finger gun thing. Uh, stick your stick in that, and then you want your pointer and your middle finger on top, curl around. Uh, it's basically like it also rests on your ring finger, about about on the, uh, I guess the second joint there. And then your thumb should actually be touching your pointer finger technically. Most of the time, uh, this is kind of like an old school thing, like it should always be touching, you should never ever take your thumb off, but I think depending on the technique you're doing, if you're trying to get a lot of volume, you will actually like open up your hand a little bit more. So. And then it's like a, it's almost like the same motion you would use to open a doorknob. 
way of turning like that, right? Mm -hmm. And you hold it a little further back. Yeah. It's kind of like if you if you put them next to each other, your thumb should almost be like the fulcrum should be at the same spot, basically, in the fix. Just about. So. All right, that's traditional grip. Um, I think we've only got like one more thing left. Uh, we've got tempo, so that's obviously super important. It's just uh, basically speed. So as a drummer, you know, obviously we want to be able to keep a steady beat. That's super important. Um, but you can also use tempo, of course, in music. There's tempo changes where it can really you know, bring more to the music by changing that tempo or kicking things up a notch. Like also playing live, we want want a faster tempo. Um, for like a live song just to get more energy and more like driving so um yeah i think that pretty much covers tempo so everybody and with tempo is that the same thing with like the metronome as well like changing the metronome or yeah so uh the metronome helps us uh basically you know the goal of the metronome is to provide perfect timekeeping it's kind of like a clock um and we measure you know the speed and the tempo in beats per minute so um just like they would a heartbeat um so if you have like 60 beats per minute it's literally a clock at that point and an audible clock um, and it's just keeping us in time and a metronome is a really great tool to help you keep your time steady and be aware of how fast you're playing um, and then also it's a good way to kind of gauge where you are with learning new techniques and stuff uh, I like to use it to with my students to help them kind of realize oh man like I can see I've actually gotten like 10 beats per minute faster playing this one fill or this one lick or whatever so or this beat or whatever it is so um, but yeah so the metronome you can adjust the the beats per minute um, you can change also the type of notes it plays for you. So typically those going to play quarter notes. We're always counting to four, right? So one, two, three, four. So here's my metronome right now. Two, three, four. And then maybe I want to practice playing, you know, parrot it a little bit at the top at 16 notes. And then I decide I want to grab a little bit faster, so I turn the metronome on. Metronomes or anything else like that? Yeah, that and people actually, can resource? I left my phone today. So, um, uh, yeah, I recommend just find a metronome app. There's like Metro Timer, I think. Uh, I can't remember the name of one of these right now. There's a really good one. I wish I could remember what the heck we it can, is. We'll on drop my a iPhone. comment yeah, when Jared remembers. We'll drop uh, it Tempo right Advanced is the one for iPhone. It's a little more expensive, but it's really neat. I mean, you can do so many different, uh, you can program it to do like time signature changes within a song. Um, you can do all sorts of polyrhythms and, and really cool stuff. Um, so that's always nice. Any subdivision you want, weird time signatures, weird subdivisions, uh, quintuplets and septuplets and stuff. It's just, you can almost just endlessly keep on going and make it ridiculous if you want to. Um, and actually what I really recommend almost even more than that though is for a lot of people, there are some really cool apps that are out there now for, um, playing along to music. Cause I mean, I think traditionally, you know, if you couldn't play the song at the speed it was at, it was like, okay, well you gotta practice with your metronome until you can do all the things you need to do. And then you have to go put it with the music, which is definitely challenging because even if you've gotten all the skills down to play that stuff, now you have to be listening to the music and lining everything up with it. So that's its own skill. Um, so I think these apps are really cool because they actually allow you to change the pitch as well if you're like a singer or a guitarist. Um, and if you're playing with a singer who needs it in a different key, you can actually change the pitch and practice with the song in real time in the correct key. Um, or as a drummer or any instrumentalist or singer, you can slow stuff down and actually play in time with the music that you're actually trying to play to. So that's pretty cool. So that's one of my favorite things, and I encourage all my students uh, in the bands, in my private lessons, everything, to definitely get one of those apps. I use it all the time, even for like ridiculous hard songs that I'm trying to work on. So um, it's a really great tool. Cool. Well, we're all about tools at Music Compound and providing all those tools for you. Um, we're going to close out with one more thing. I want us to talk about the different... Um, we have brushes, we have sticks, and things like this. Yeah. The reason I love these sticks is because the first time I learned how to play drums with Jared, I was doing uh, Fly Me to the Moon, which is a jazz song, right? Yeah. So I learned to play, obviously, with sticks at first, um, but then we moved into um, these really cool things. We have two more minutes. Okay. Awesome. So will you break down sticks and then the brushes? Yeah, so um, obviously everyone knows, everyone knows what drumsticks look like. There are a variety of different sizes and stuff. These are you know, kind of thinner. Um, these are probably good for like jazz and some rock. Uh, typically, like rock players would probably use like heavier sticks. Um, there's you know all sorts of different sizes and shapes. For example, here are some ridiculously large sticks. These are actually marching sticks, super thick. They bounce really well though because of that. 
um, that extra weight, and they're obviously pretty loud because they're so large. So a lot of uh, mass behind it when you're dropping it. Uh, the, there's also mallets where you can you know do cymbal swells and stuff, but uh, here you can kind of almost hear a little bit of the stick like in there as far as the alternating hit. Whereas with the mallets, it's almost just like pure like wash of sound without any attack, which is really nice. Um, so mallets are good for that, or just softer parts on like toms and stuff like that. Maybe Latin beats could be really cool with mallets. Um, I don't have a pair of mallets right now, sorry guys. Um, We're wrapping up right now. And then, yeah, brushes. So I really think brushes are super interesting for drummers because with mallets or different types of sticks, you're still pretty much doing the same thing, but brushes are cool because besides just, you know, downward and upward motions, we're now, you know, using the texture of like a drum head and you're actually having to incorporate, kind of like pat your head and rub your tummy, but you have to do it in time now. So uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, yeah, dinner they, at the Japanese restaurant. They call this one stirring soup, so there you go. Definitely a lot of cooking analogies there. Yeah. Cool. Definitely. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right, well, we're out of time. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks. Kudos to Jared, our lead drum instructor here at Music Compound. Uh, once again, his workshop is November 14th here at the Cattleman location. Uh, we're doing lots of drum events this month, so if you're interested in getting with us, um, on the drum kits, let us know. Jared is also doing a drum rental program, so if you are interested in drum lessons that don't have a drum kit, give us a call here at Music Compound. Anyways, yeah. Chris, what, what, what I was going to say, and the workshop too is going to be like, uh, the goal is to have, you know, eight to ten drummers. We're all going to have our own drum kits. We're going to be spread out in the warehouse, taking up the whole thing. Uh, my goal is to get some uh, players here as well to kind of like jam with us towards the end. So we're going to work on some different techniques, some kind of nifty little extras, you know, like maybe some fun little stuff to get you like trying new things on the drum kit um, and then we're going to all kind of jam out, take turns soloing and, and uh, improvising and then we'll probably jam with the band at the end, take turns you know, soloing and fiddling and then stuff, so it'll be fun, check it out.